Welcome to the next verse of Anand Sahib. And in verse 31, the Guru is going to be showing us how do we begin to manage our mindset on a day-to-day -day basis. The next verse begins with, Hari is the currency and my mind is the trader. Hari is the currency and my mind is the trader who learned of this wealth from the true Guru. Chant Har Har at every moment from your heart and earn profits daily. Only those to whom Hari has decided receive this wealth. Says Nanak, Hari is the currency and my mind has become the trader. The question we're going to be addressing today is what wisdom do we use to conduct our daily lives? Now, we all like to think that we are independent, free thinkers who can make all of our own decisions. But the reality is, is that we're all using one method to make decisions in life. And that method is anything that allows me to preserve this me, allows me to protect the I amness. Even if we seek advice from others, if there's something that we need to do in life and we try and ask lots of different people, ultimately, the one that we go with is the one that makes the most sense to preserve this I am, the one that looks after and feels best to the I am itself. And this feels like a perfectly reasonable way to make decisions and most of us would think this is the only way, it's the only option. Now the Guru has suggested that there is an alternative way. There is a way to conduct our lives which is a Gurmukh, enlightened way of doing so. And the Guru takes the analogy of a business owner. And this verse starts by Guru saying, Har Ras Meri Man Vanjara Hari is a currency that my mind is trading in. Har Ras Meri Man Vanjara Satgurte Ras Jani Hari is a currency and my mind is the trader who learned of this wealth from the true Guru. Anyone who has run a business before will know that you never really switch off from thinking about it. You are eating and sleeping and spending all day and night worrying about how do I keep this business going? How do I do the next urgent task that needs to be done? And even if we take time off work, even if we go on holiday, our mind is still thinking about it, still checking our messages, still worrying about it, because it's something that we know that we have to manage. And so when we look at the analogy of running a business, we realize that there is an ongoing concern about how do we grow this business, how do we manage it, and this is constantly happening at the back of our mind. Now the question that the Guru wants us to think about is, what if you started to treat your life in the same way that someone manages a business? What if we thought of our mind as something that requires managing? The question then becomes, well, if my mind is the business, then what is the product or service that I'm offering to the world? And what is the reward? I understand what a business is. I make a product or I have a service and I sell it and I get money for it. Well, how does that work with the mind? Now, with our lives, absolutely everything that we do is kind of like a business. It is an exchange of some sort. We are exchanging our time, our energy, our attention, and in return for some reward. When we look at our jobs, we know it's very clear we're exchanging our time and our effort and our expertise, and in return for monetary gain. We are trading in our skills so that we can get the money to buy the things we need and the comforts that we want to have in our life. And at home, we're doing the same thing. It's actually another type of transaction where we are exchanging niceness, kindness with the ones around us so that we can gain their friendship. 
we are giving out love and concern and kindness in return for their friendship, in return for their companionship. And so we realize when we start to look at our life as a business, absolutely every single thing is an interaction with the world. Absolutely everything that we do is an interaction for survival and we are trying to gain pleasant experiences. We're trying to gain comforts. And the reason that we do this is that we hope that if we gain enough of these pleasant experiences, needs, wants, comforts, companionship, that all of those will give us peace in our life. And of course it does. Let's be absolutely clear. Food, having enough shelter, having clothes, having warmth, having a home and good relationships, all of these things do give us a lot of peace in our life because if we didn't have them, we would have no peace in our life. But the truth is that animals do exactly the same thing. Even animals do all of this to some degree. They mate and they feed and they build a shelter or they find somewhere safe for them to live and they form groups so that they can be safe. And so for human beings, we really have to ask, is this enough? And most of us will answer that, no, it's not enough. Yes, we do all of these things, but each person is searching for a deeper meaning in life. Each person is looking for purpose, for fulfillment. And the most fortunate ones are the ones who realize how to find it, how to go beyond the world, to look beyond Maya to find the real value of life. So this is really continuing on from the theme of the last verse. And so when we're able to look past all the differences in the world, and find that spirit, find the essence of life itself. When we see what Hari really is, that's when we start to find a way of overcoming some of the difficulties that we face in just transacting with the world. We realize that we need to do all these transactions, but we also realize that, that there's something deeper. It's not fulfilling us. How do we then do it? We start to find what Hari is, and this is what the Guru is trying to say time and time again throughout this verse, this divinity, this universal essence, what it's talking about is that there is a pure form of what you really are. It's the purest version of ourselves and everything all around us. And the Guru is saying in this verse, when you find that, you find the final reward. This hararas, this currency, this wealth that is more valuable more precious than anything else itself. So we are now talking about the ultimate gain in life, the ultimate reward, the ultimate success. And those who are graced with this wisdom, those who are lucky enough to have a realization unlocked within their minds, they realize that this is the most precious thing in life. And so in the previous verse, we talked about this where the Guru says, Har aap amulak hai. This is priceless. This is invaluable. So the big question is why? Why is this the most important thing in our life? The reason that this is the most precious thing is because once you find it, the seeking stops. The constantly trying to better your life, trying to look for more, this restlessness, this internal agitation begins to settle. And that is what all of the spiritual masters from every tradition around the world has made us realize is that you can live a far more settled way of life. This is the higher way of living. This is this new way of life, this new perspective that every one of us seems to have missed. And the old way of looking at life is to just go and keep struggling and trying to gain all these temporary pleasures. And there is an enlightened way of living. To make divinity your business, to make this your highest priority. And Guru is using this analogy of business here. Har ras meri man vanjara. Hari is the currency that my mind is now trading in. This is coming from the perspective of the enlightened master who's saying that I used to be like you. I used to trade in all of these different things. I used to try and buy wealth and buy comforts and try and 
work hard towards making all these relationships great. And I realized that no matter how much I tried, I can hold on to them for a while, but ultimately things don't last. You know, you have to start asking yourself these questions. The things that you have valued from childhood, where are they now? You know, I look at my children sometimes, and as children do, between them, they bicker over the smallest things. And as parents, we, we are sometimes really taken aback by, why are you making such a big deal about something that's so small? Because in their life, it's huge. But for a grown-up, these things are trivial. These are small. You want to play with one toy? Well, just because your brother or your sister is playing with it, play with something else. But the kids get so competitive and they say, well, why should they have it? I want to have it. And as a parent, it's really interesting. You begin to see these human traits that we all have develop from childhood. This greediness, this selfishness, this I want and I must have and I need to have it for myself. It's really ingrained into the human psyche right from a young age. And the spiritual master is saying, I used to do all these things, but now I'm living a different way. Just as a child found certain things really important, the adult doesn't find it important. So the adult is the evolved version of the child. The spiritual master is the evolved version of the adult. And so the spiritual master is saying, my mind is now working in a different way. It now seeks to transact with divinity rather than transacting with the world. And it's not that you're not functioning in the world. It's that you are functioning at a higher level. And so let's go back to this word trade. Trade means to exchange one thing for another. And so the awakened ones, what are they trading? They have traded everything for this guru's way of thinking, for this guru's way of living. Remember the last verse said, give your head, surrender your head. The enlightened masters have done that. They have surrendered absolutely everything and now they have gained the ultimate reward, the hararas. Going right back to verse 9, look where the guru said, tan man dhan sab somp gurko. Body, mind, wealth, surrender all to the guru. And we need to realize we're not talking about losing something. You're not talking about giving something up. It is simply an evolution. Think about the example of a caterpillar. The caterpillar has to give up everything it knows of itself in order to evolve into a butterfly. Has the caterpillar lost something or have they gained something? Yes, they've lost their old ways, but they've gained something far more beautiful, far more freeing, because now they're not restricted to one tree or branch. Now they can fly. That's exactly the same of what the Guru is saying to you. You don't have to lose something. You simply have to evolve into something greater. And what you're giving up is the labels of me the label of me and you, the labels of separation, and you're replacing everything with one label, the label of oneness itself. And when you've tasted your complete self, you no longer want to go back to your old ways. The butterfly never wants to be the caterpillar again. It's gained too much. And the mind, which once contained the ego, has traded it and now it contains the divine. Why would it want to go back into the old ways? And so the spiritual master is trying to encourage us by saying, you don't have to give something up. What you're giving up is not that precious. What you potentially have to gain is far greater. So start trading in this. And this is where the next line says, Meri man varjara sat gur te ras jani. My mind is trading in this and it learned how to do this. It learned how to trade from the Guru. It learnt of this wealth. Now think about this. Left to your own devices, the mind has only known one way to live life, and that is the way of attachments. The mind has always constructed labels of first there is a me, and then if there is a me, there is a whole group of things and people and relationships and experiences that the me must hold on to. And so the mind is always going to do this. We see this from children and from all different backgrounds and, and throughout time. Children, the 
youngest of human beings have always worked in this way and as we grow into adulthood we simply change what we're trading in we simply change what we value but the method is exactly the same to build the i am and then to exchange with the world in order to try and hold on to as many things and so the guru is saying that there is a new way of thinking and you need to be mentored you need a business mentor just as if you were running a business you would try and spend time with those people who know more than you those people who've experienced this in a better way who've succeeded in a better way if our mind is now the business then who is the mentor the one who has already conquered the mind the one who has already trodden this path and realized where the pitfalls are where the dangers are how to walk on this path in the most efficient way and remember Time and time again, we need to make this clear. The Guru is not a person. We're not talking about one specific individual. We are talking about the essence of life itself being your teacher. The oneness itself is your true Guru. The universe, the oneness, the, the very vibration which exists within you is what you must learn from. That is your true teacher. So now the choice becomes, am I going to follow my old ways? If my mind is the business, if being successful is about how do I overcome and manage this mind in the best way possible so I get the most profit, the most benefit from this, then who am I going to listen to? Am I just going to try and wing it? Am I just going to try and do the best I can with the limited knowledge that I have? Or am I going to listen to the core of who I am, the true guru, the true wisdom that lives inside me? What am I going to do and how am I going to run the business of my own life? And in order to answer this question, you really need to clarify what are your business goals. If you go to a business mentor, the first thing they're going to ask you is, what are you trying to achieve? What product are you trying to sell? Who is your market? How much profit do you want to make? How much revenue do you want to make? And so we need to start to have clarity as to what are our life goals. And the truth is, all human beings only have one goal. All human beings are trying to find bliss, are trying to find anand. That is the ultimate goal of life. But the mind is always going to choose the outside way, the way of materialism in order to gain that bliss, the way of attachment, of trying to gain things, that is the method that the human mind thinks is going to gain spiritual bliss, the ultimate bliss of life. And the Guru is saying that there is a different way. The mentor is trying to show you there's a more direct way to bliss than going via materialism, via the outside world. That's the indirect path. The Guru is saying, I have a direct path to make your life, the business of your life, more successful. The question is, what is this direct path? In the next line, the Guru says, Har har nit japeho jiho, laha kateho diari. Chant har har at each moment from your inner being and earn profits daily. You know, when you run a business, sometimes at the very beginning when you're just starting up, you know that you're not going to make a profit for quite some time and you make a lot of sacrifices that you are going to spend all of your time and effort and sometimes you're even putting all your own money in to keep this business afloat and in the hope that at some point in the future you're going to turn your profits around, that you're going to be gaining enough revenue that the revenue outweighs the losses that your business is incurring. The Guru is saying something very interesting here. If you follow the technique the mentor is, is laying out for you, you will begin to earn profit daily. And so how do we do this? The Guru is saying this is the method. The method is har har nit japeho jiho. Every single moment, nit, the word nit means by moment by moment. With each and every moment, chant har har from your very being. Think about how we spend all of our moments, all of our lives. When we wake up in the morning, some of our time is spent in getting ready. Some of our time is spent in eating, in working, in planning for the future. 
in looking after our family members. So think about every breath as a transaction. Every breath is the opportunity to trade. Every breath is an opportunity to interact with the world. How do we spend all of our breaths? The Guru is saying at each moment you need to have ongoing awareness of the Divine. How do we do this? We've got so many things in our lives that we need to worry about. We need to get ourselves ready for work. We need to do the thing that we're being paid to do in our jobs. We have to plan for all the other things that our family members are relying on us for. We need to look after our home and build our own homes and manage our homes. How do we spend every moment thinking about something else? I've got too many things in my life. I'm sure all of you are thinking. The Guru is saying, with every single thing that you do, recognize that there is divinity in that. In the things that you are already doing, recognize every moment as a conversation with that divine, as a moment with Hari, with Ram. And this might sound really unnatural, really strange, but with guidance we learn how to do this. We learn how to see things clearly. And an example that, that I think really clarifies this for me is when I was younger, I started to become interested in antiques. And I would go to these antique markets and second-hand goods markets where absolutely everything was used, everything that was being sold on all of these different stalls, all to me looked like useless junk. But I would take along a friend who was really experienced and where I would walk past something, he would say, hey, come back, look at this again. And he would pick something up amongst the rubble and he would say, look, look at this one piece. And he would show me what to look for. He would show me, look at the design, look at the craftsmanship, look at the materials. This comes from this period. This comes from, from, from this region. And so what I dismissed as absolute junk, somebody who knows what they're looking for, showed me, trained me how to look at these things. And so in the same way, that's exactly what the Guru is doing in your life. Every single thing that you have looked at in life, you've seen with your uneducated mind, with your mind that doesn't know what it's looking at. And the one who is wiser than us, the mentor, the one who has done this before, says, hey, you know the thing that you're looking at in life? Why don't you look at it from a different angle? Look at it in a different way. So we have to learn from those who know how to look at things and show us what to look for. So this is the same way that the world that we look at may seem completely ordinary. But to the awakened ones, every single thing looks precious. Everything is sacred. Think about that for a moment. Every single breath can be treated as something sacred. Every interaction can be treated as an interaction with the divine, with the universal force itself. And the Guru is encouraging you to practice looking at life in this way. Open your eyes. Recognize the world in a better way. Recognize that the force that is keeping your heart beating right now, think about your heartbeat. How important is that heartbeat? If it stopped for just a moment, everything would end. It's so precious to you. That thing which is most precious to you is also inside every single other person, every plant, every molecule. That essence, that life force is in absolutely everything. You've been talking to that universal force all the time because you have that universal force within you as well. And so this is how you now begin to take profit at every moment. With every breath, when you start to live like this, every interaction becomes a conversation with God. Everything is now a blessing. Think about how we live our life. Most of us are living our life waiting for the blessings to come. We're always waiting for something else. And we don't recognize the blessings that are right in front of us. We don't recognize how to look at life from the lens of oneness with the absolute clarity 
that this is what life is all about. You are missing it. You don't have to go and do something else. You're missing something that has always been there. And so the Guru has been trying to tell you this message time and time again. Stay with this way of looking at it. Look at life in this way. Don't look at life in any other way. This message of always has been repeated all throughout an Ansaib. Look at verse 2, right at the beginning. The Guru said, E man meria, tu sada raho har nale. O mind of mine, always remain with Hari. But no matter how many times we hear this, we keep forgetting it. Why does that happen? It's so easy to blame ourselves when we've been on a spiritual journey for quite some time and very few people talk about the experience of actually feeling quite low, spiritually low, spiritually disappointed, feeling guilty that we're not able to keep up with this really high standard that the wisdom is setting for us, that we're not able to do it. And I don't know if you've ever experienced this, but I've certainly gone through moments where I felt like giving up where you just feel completely fed up with not being able to do this all the time. And you start to question, is this effort really worth it? Am I able to do this? Am I not good enough? Where is this bliss that I'm being promised? Where is this profit at every moment that I'm being told is available to us? How do we do this? Whenever we feel low like this, remember this one thing, suffering, is a reminder that your perception is wrong. Suffering is an alarm that should awaken you that you are looking at life in an incorrect way. So if you feel low, there is only one reason. The same reason why we feel low about everything else. Remember that we think of happiness as gaining what we want and we think of suffering as losing something that we want. So when you feel low, you are feeling like you're losing something, which means there is a me that is still attached to something. There is a sense of me that wants to gain, and when the me can't get the gain, it feels like we're losing. And so we haven't changed our mindset. All we've done is changed how we interact with the world where we were interacting with the world to gain material wealth and companionship and friendship, now we've just changed what we're trading with, what we're interacting with. But how we do it, we've still stuck with the old mind way of doing things, which is, I am here to gain something. And the Guru is saying, you haven't given up your head. You haven't surrendered yourself. And you need to play this game by surrendering. The highest profit comes at the highest cost and the cost is giving your head. Giving your head means that there is no expectation of gain. There is no personal desire for bliss because desire is the hidden obstacle. That's the trap. So we then go back and realize if I'm experiencing spiritual disappointment, it is because there is a part of me that I've yet to give up there is still some more work to be done. If there is a self-talk that is going on in your head right now that says, I'm not good enough, this isn't working, I've tried so hard and I'm just not able to do it. What you have at that point is an opportunity to let go. Let go of your sense of control and ask the mentor, the guru to guide you, to steer you on this journey. And sometimes even that's not that easy to do. Sometimes we feel like, I don't know who I'm asking. When I ask, I never get, a, get a, an answer. I never know who I'm speaking to. At least when I'm speaking with the world, then I'm having a real conversation with something that's tangible and real. And all the spiritual stuff seems like it's somewhere in the clouds. It's not a reality for me. And the Guru is saying time and time again, you need to understand that you, the, there is still a level of giving up that needs to be done. And this isn't easy to do. Sometimes it may seem easy to just walk away. You might just think, well, you know what, I've, I've really given it my best shot and it's time to, get, to, to just walk away from this journey. But at this very last hurdle, at this very last step, you mustn't turn away. 
You mustn't become vermuk, one who turns away from this wisdom. Your last step is to trust in the mentor. Trust that this teacher knows how to take you there. Trust that this business mentor knows more than you. So you have to become closer to the Guru. You have to become Sanmuk rather than Vemuk. And what that means is you have to dive deeper into self-surrender. There is a level of me that you have yet to give up. And you have to experience the final reward by completely surrendering your head. And we try so hard in this journey. And, and sometimes I know if those of you who are listening will say, I need to hear something new. I need to hear something that's going to ignite, reignite that flame because it's, this isn't working for me. You know, a question that I get asked quite often is, I really don't know how to even just wake up early in the morning. It seems so difficult. And my response to that is, have you asked? Try this the night before when you go to sleep. If your goal is, I just want to wake up early in the morning so that I can spend some time meditating because I know that that's a, a really good way to start my day. The night before, just put it out there to the universe and say, I have no control. I've tried. I don't know how to do it by myself. You help me. I'm going to put out a request to the universe that says, I want to meditate. I want this in my life. And see what happens. When you make that your request every night, try that for seven nights. Maybe the first night it won't work. Maybe even the second night it won't work. Maybe that lazy mind will still kick in. But if you make that a consistent trusting of that mentor, of that guru, of that universal force that says there is a part of me that has tried to be in control and my own self-control doesn't seem to work. I need to relinquish this control and just let the universal force do what it needs to do. And just ask that universal force, you steer, you drive, you navigate, you take the ownership of this business of my mind because I can't seem to control my own mind. Try that and that's what Ardas really means. This surrender, this giving up control and saying everything is in the divine control. If you help me, then my mind will be steered to remembering the truth. And this way of thinking, even this is a blessing. And the Guru says, Etan tina milya jin har ape pana. Only those to whom Hari has decided receive this wealth. Kehe nanak har aras meri with grace your mind will begin to set itself free to be free from itself and you will begin to realize the profits of daily bliss answer these questions either by writing them down or discussing them in your groups are there times when you have felt spiritual disappointment what qualities would you want your mind to have throughout your day? What targets should we set for our mindset to achieve these qualities? How can we use the Guru as a mindset mentor?